Mm. So it's a good thing that they're protected, but it does mean that badgers are able to achieve very high densities in some areas. And of course they can cause problems. Mm. They can cause problems mainly by crop damage. Like very, very rarely by um, taking, usually they take sickly lambs. They don't kill lambs that can run and are mm. healthy. Mm. Um, but if foxes are about, they will kill lambs and they'll often leave them. And badgers are often found eating lambs and of course the farmers blame the badgers when mm. in fact it's a fox or sometimes a dog mm. that's actually killed them. Mm. But on the whole, it's chickens, they, they'll kill chickens occasionally if they're able to access them. Mm -hmm. So the obvious thing is, if you farm chickens, keep badgers out by fencing. Um, and if it's a high value crop like vines, vineyards that are springing up all over the country now, one of the worst um, sources of damage to vineyards is badgers. They oh. love grapes. Oh, did they? So, okay. um, you know, you've got to keep them out. Yes. But on the whole, we, we tend to talk about the damage that they do, but nobody really seems to pay much attention to the benefits of badgers. Mm -hmm. They're a key species, they're right at the top of the ecological pyramid. Mm -hmm. And as such, they can impact on all of the other species in the pyramid. They can eat young rabbits, they dig up the, the nests of young rabbits, mm -hmm. and they can kill and eat young rabbits, so they keep rabbit numbers down. They also have a role to play in keeping um, certain other mammal species in check, their populations. They do have a habit sometimes of taking the eggs and chicks of ground nesting birds. Mm -hmm. But on the whole, um, the damage that they do in that respect is insignificant. Mm -hmm. And that's true also of foxes, uh, except where, of course, you've got a big nesting colony like terns on the coast. Um, badgers or foxes can cause a lot of damage there. But interestingly, the, the main damage to ground nesting birds has been found to be cattle. Oh, has it? And uh, Just tram like trampling. trampling and mm. nosing of skylarks and meadow pivot nests by cattle mm. it causes much more damage than badgers and foxes together, mm. many, many more times. Mm. Well, so I think that you've got to balance the little bits of damage that they cause, and yes. it can be quite significant. Yes. Um, getting into cereal crops is a real nuisance for a farmer because they flatten a lot of the crops and pigeons can then get in on that flattened part of the crop and make it a lot worse. Mm -hmm. um, so the laying and flattening of um, cereal crops is quite a sort of serious problem in some areas. Mm. Um, I think you've got to set those damage uh, sources against the benefits of badgers as well. Mm -hmm. Very difficult to quantify the benefits, but they are a very important member of our indigenous fauna mm -hmm. in this country, mm -hmm. and we shouldn't forget that. No, absolutely. But in the past, they were kept more in check by two other predators you were mentioning earlier, who were were at the top of the food chain. <laughs> well, if you go ago. back a few hundred years in Britain, we had wolves mm -hmm. and we had bears, and both of those big carnivores would take um, badgers mm. uh, if they got a chance. That's probably why badgers evolved the habit of, of building great big sets where they could retreat. Oh. If uh, as the first sign of a problem, if a badger's out at night foraging and a dog, say, encounters the badger and, and will, will sometimes attack it, mm. the badger will bolt back to its set. Mm. The set is like a great big fortress, mm. Mm. and probably it was very important in the days when there were wolves and bears about. But um, you know, they aren't they aren't here anymore. So badgers don't have any natural predators, except perhaps the motorcar. <laughs>